Yo, what's up everybody? Anton here from dropshiplifestyle.com and welcome to another episode of Dropship Weekly. Now, if you have been following this channel for any amount of time, you know the normal purpose of this weekly show is for me to answer your questions and also celebrate our students' results from over at dropshiplifestyle.com. Now, today I am gonna do something a little bit different and that's because last night a woman named Ruby Lee from a, a podcast called Own Your Hustle, she's based out in Australia, she had me on as a guest and it was cool because the conversation at first was about side hustles and you know kind of my story how I went from cookies selling cookies online to more expensive products how I went from having different fulfillment centers all over the country to eventually just working almost a hundred percent on the dropship model and you know kind of the shifts in business so we did talk about that but the interesting part because you know maybe that's true to you but I've been doing it so long that you know that's just my life but what got interesting is when we started to talk about why people fail and when I gave I guess tips advice lessons on why I think this is happening and what people can do to not fail if you want to create a second stream of income if you want an extra you know whatever call it a thousand dollars a month five thousand dollars a month ten thousand dollars a month but if you want to side hustle successfully uh, there's a lot of reasons why I see people fail over and over and over kind of just throw their hands up and think like this whole thing's a scam so that's what we're gonna talk about in today's episode of drop Ship weekly. All right, so let me just say I apologize for having my phone in my hand and looking at it as I'm recording this, but it's because I took notes on a podcast I did as a guest, which is kind of crazy, but it's again because I wanted to share this lesson with you. So the first thing that I should address, right, like if you just Google side hustles, you'll see all different types of stuff because all it really refers to is doing something outside of your primary source of income, right? So if your primary source of income is you work during the day as a school teacher, your side hustle would be what you do on nights or weekends or your lunch break to, to earn more money, right? To increase your earning power. So that could be things like driving for Lyft or driving for Uber. That could be things like spending weekends working at, you know, I don't know, a library. It could be anything, right? So the clear ways that people could succeed or fail with what I would call more traditional side hustles like that is if you don't do it or you don't show up. So just know I'm not talking about, you know, again, delivering pizzas on the weekends as a side hustle. I'm not talking about going around Austin where I live right now and charging all those electric bird scooters that you see everywhere. Even though, yes, that technically is a side hustle. I'm talking about building something that actually is valuable for you. So don't wanna knock anybody doing what they gotta do to, to make money, but again, I'm talking about something that will build over time. And that's the first thing that I wanna address with this. You know, the types of side hustles that I'm talking about could be you offering your services. So if you're a school teacher, it could be tutoring, right? Maybe online, maybe, you know, in person in your local town. Uh, it could also be building a business. So your side hustle could be building a dropship store using the dropship lifestyle model. That's definitely a side hustle. It could be making blog posts or making videos and earning money via being an affiliate, right? Those are all side hustles as well. And those are the type I'm talking about. Now, with those, you do have to take responsibility for everything. And that's the first thing that I see so many people who aren't entrepreneurial minded, I guess could be the word, if they don't already have entrepreneurial experience, if they don't think like an entrepreneur when they first try their thing, their side hustle, then if it fails, they just say, well, it doesn't work. Of course it doesn't work. How could I possibly do this on the nights or in the weekends? So the truth is, whatever it is that you wanna do, whether it be affiliate marketing or making money via AdSense on YouTube or building a dropship store, there are a ton of people out there doing it and the reason it's failing is because of you if you're not making it work, okay? So it really does come down to that. First of all, even though it is in your spare time, you have to take responsibility, okay? Now, next tip and something I don't see people that are trying to do side hustles really work towards, and that is building something that compounds over time. Now, I survey all of our students at Dropship Lifestyle, and I actually ask them what their end goal is. Do they want to make a second stream of income, or do they want to quit their jobs? And what's funny is it's about 50-50, about half of our people say that they want a second stream of income and about half say they want to leave their jobs because of their new income, right? 
Either way, if you wanna to get to that point, yes, it's a lot easier to do online than it is to do you know, in the traditional world of building a retail business, but you gotta know it takes time, and especially because you're going to have limited hours to invest, because, again, this is a side hustle, you have a full-time gig, you have to be sure that everything you do in your business, in your side hustle, is compounding, okay? Very, very important. That means if you wanna make a few extra hundred bucks a week, and let's just say you, you know, go that lift route and you're driving for Lyft, that doesn't compound. Maybe you get better reviews, but nothing's gonna build on itself, okay? So that's not something you're gonna quit your job for. Now, if you do wanna quit your job, maybe you have you know a terrible boss, maybe you are underpaid, maybe you're just not happy, then listen, what you do in your free time should build on itself. So if you're tutoring, let's go for that example, my advice would be don't do it locally in your hometown. Or if you do it, record different lessons that you can then sell online, right? Turn it into more assets and make your time become not connected to money. Don't have it tied directly where it's X amount of dollars per hour. So not only that, not only like will you be able to make money from that content while you're at your normal gig, but it'll also build on itself. So a year from now, as you've been doing your side hustle, maybe you'll have a series of, in that scenario, you know, 30 videos online that you have for sale or that bring you affiliate incomes or so on and so on. There's so many different ways to monetize it. But again, it should build on itself and it should become something that's worth more. That way, your side income will go up, and that way, if you wanna leave your job, you'll get to a point where that income either exceeds or matches your normal nine to five. Now, next thing that is important, okay? The, yeah, this is really important, and it might sound counterintuitive at first, but if you don't have money to invest, then you should do your side hustle for free, okay? And people go wrong here too, because they think, I want this side income, I need some extra money, I'm just gonna go you know flip stuff on eBay or something, right? Something like that. That is short term, it maybe is a quick little win, but it doesn't build into anything. So what I'm saying is maybe at first, your side hustle is volunteering your time. And I don't mean at a local pet shelter, which would be awesome if you wanna do it, but what I mean is with a company that's doing what you wanna do. So let's say, for example, you want your side hustle to be dropshipping again, right? You wanna build a dropship lifestyle store and maybe you really don't have any extra cash, maybe you can't afford our training programs and you're just out there and you're like, you know, I wanna do this, but I, I don't have the money, right? So what am I gonna do? Well, you could do it yourself. You know, it'll take a little bit longer, but you could do it. Or you could reach out, and I'm not saying we're just gonna do this with everybody that says it, but if you reached out and said, hey, listen, I love your stuff. You know, I love what you're doing. I really wanna build my own highly profitable semi-automated store, but I can't afford to invest in your courses yet. Is there any way I could help you guys out, right? Kind of barter your services. So maybe your skill is like proofreading or making, you know, images in Photoshop or something, but you're giving your time for free and that way you're working directly with a company doing what you wanna do. You're getting resources from them, you're giving something in exchange, and even though you're not getting paid for your hours right there, it is compounding, okay? Because what you're learning is gonna be turned into an income, it's gonna build over time. So whatever skill it is, that's something you should seriously consider, especially early on. Now. Another thing that definitely is counterintuitive is when people are trying to build these side hustles, they think they should do everything and anything. So let's just say right now you're working a nine to five, right? And you're driving 45 minutes to work and an hour and a half home in traffic. And maybe you're listening to all these podcasts and let's just say they're talking about building Shopify stores, right? You're getting all of these ideas in your head like I should run direct response Facebook ads, I should do Instagram story ads because CPMs are so cheap, I should make a YouTube channel, I should do X, Y, and Z and all this stuff. And then what's gonna happen by the time you get home and you're ready to put in your side hustle time of call it two hours a night, it's gonna be impossible because there's gonna be too much for you to possibly do. So as someone trying to earn an income from a side hustle, you have to focus on cutting and only doing the smallest percent of things that are going to work. So I'm not you know, a freelancer, I don't offer services, so I can't give you direct examples there, but I could tell you if I was building a new store or if I was advising someone to build a new store as a side hustle, I would say only focus on the most expensive products you could find that are eligible for drop shipping, probably around like four or five thousand bucks. Only focus on the best suppliers you can get approved with, and then only focus on Google paid ads through Google product listing ads and stick there. Don't think, oh, I should also try this Instagram thing and this YouTube thing and blogging and so on and so on and so on. Stay with everything else cut 
until that works, until that gets you where you wanna be, then you can add in. But a big mistake, again, that people that wanna do side hustles get into is they have this free time for learning and they learn so much that it just becomes this backlog of things that no one will ever be able to accomplish in you know the limited time you have for your side hustle. So keep that in mind. And then finally, one thing I'll say uh, you know, about why people fail and how you can not fail if you really want a side hustle is treat your thing, whatever your thing is, whether that be a dropship store or you know a tutoring service or whatever. You're making people, you know, dining room tables in your garage. Whatever your side hustle is, treat it as a real business because just because it's you know taking one or two hours a day from you doesn't mean it's something that you could just you know mess around with and hope it works out. Because if you're not willing to put in the time to make it real and to respect the business or respect the hustle with what it deserves, someone else will. And guess what? You know, sorry, you're not going to get any sales or your side hustle will never become what it could be. So treat it real. Give it the respect that it deserves. Um, we also talked about on the podcast last night, uh, actually we didn't talk about this, but it was something that I thought was going to come up. So I wanted to share it with you is you should think about this, right? Like if you're afraid to start, right? Like if you, if you're listening to this and you don't have a store yet, or you don't have, you know, anything, you don't have a side hustle and you want one, but you're afraid to start, like really think about your fear and then try to justify it. Like, is your fear that you're going to have, you know, just a failure and you're going to waste your, your current free time? Time, which is your evenings and your weekends and it's not gonna work, you know, is that the actual thing that's holding you back? And if it is, like I mentioned, treat this as a real business. Maybe you should even work for free because that's something that's gonna get you in the mindset of what works. It's gonna give you more confidence. And even if your first three months at trying to build a side hustle just fail and your time only went into building something that never became money to you, then it's still experience. You're still gonna be better off on the next one. And I can't tell you how many times I've failed in different businesses, in different industries, with different ad campaigns, with different employees I've brought on, just in like, every part of the business and that's not just me. That is everybody that's ever had any success has failed so many more times than they can count. So don't be afraid of failure. It's part of business. It's part of life. That's how you learn. That's how you get better. So. Yeah, beyond that, the only other things I would say is if you're thinking of getting into a side hustle, right? Again, if you wanna offer a service or promote something as an affiliate or build a dropshipping store, you know my philosophy here at Dropship Lifestyle and that is always focus on expensive products. Again, your time is limited, so you want every transaction that occurs on your website, on your Facebook page, wherever it is you're selling, to actually pay you, okay? So focus on expensive products, focus on expensive services if you're being a consultant, Focus on promoting expensive products as an affiliate if that's the route you're gonna go. Because that way, again, when people do take action on your website or on your thing, it's gonna be worth your time and you'll be able to scale it a lot faster. So yeah, those are some of the reasons I think, you know, people fail, you know, people that try to sell eBooks in their spare time as a side hustle for seven bucks, like good luck having that turn into anything substantial. It's for most people, it's just not gonna happen. So focus on a high ticket, treat it real. Don't be afraid to fail, volunteer your time if you don't have any skill sets and always, always, always focus on something that compounds over time because I I started selling cookies again and now you know I've sold multi eight figures of all different types of hive ticket products so you never know where the route's gonna go but your skills will compound as long as you keep going so a little bit different of an episode this week, guys. Hope you found it valuable. If you did, definitely let me know in the comment section. Also would really appreciate it if you give the video a thumbs up, give it a like if you liked it. And if you're not subscribed to Dropship Lifestyle on YouTube yet, click that notification bell and the subscribe button. Cause like I said, I publish a new one of these at least once a week, typically on Thursday, right here on youtube.com slash dropship lifestyle. So thank you everybody and I'll see you next week. Mm -hmm.